Uh, it's almost eight years of experience in search information retrieval and recommendation engines. Anshim has been uh, a part of core search team at nowclear.com and ClearTrip. He's now back into open source world and is currently working with Lucidworks, the leading developer of search and discovery and uh, analytics softwares uh, based on uh, Apache Lucene and uh, Apache Solar technology. Let, please welcome Anshim. Hi guys. Um, so this is who I am. Uh, I'm Anshim Gupta and I've been doing search and related stuff for almost eight years now. Um, Currently, I work for Lucidworks, which is pretty much the primary backer of Apache Solar uh, and the community. Before this, I was uh, with AWS uh, uh, helping uh, launch a service called Cloud Search, and these are the other places that I've worked at prior to joining Cloud Search. So I'm pretty sure so far people have been talking about big data and how you know data is growing, hardware is getting cheaper, and pretty much all of you would know about it. Uh, so where's the real value when it comes to big data and a lot, you know, so it's, it's not really storage of data, which was the case until probably a few years ago. Uh, it now looks like uh, real value is in processing, storing, as well as being able to source through all of that data. Um, search, if you really look at it, how, how things have changed over the years, uh, earlier it would be an expensive solution, really complicated, uh, not really accessible to most of the people who would want to implement search. Uh, there were very few people who could do this. Uh, now, uh, th things are getting affordable. Uh, they're open source solutions, uh, which are easy to implement, work out of the box. And yeah, uh, you still can get it to be as complicated as you want. So uh, I'm going to talk about a lot of points right now and probably try and plug them all together as my talk goes on. So this is what Wikipedia says about NoSQL databases. What it says is it's, it's something uh, which helps you store data and is not really exactly how traditional relational databases look like. It's, it's meant to scale out uh, and support a lot of distributed stuff. Uh, so what it looks like is it's non-traditional, doesn't use, uh, at least it wasn't designed for SQL and may not give you asset guarantees, but at the same time you get a trade, uh, I mean you trade off the asset guarantees to get uh, a high level of scalability. Um, also, uh, with scalability comes distributedness and you want something to be fault tolerant at the same time. So um, these are the DB rankings, pretty much the, the most recent one, I guess I put this in yesterday, um, this from July and this from a site called dbengines.com. Uh, if you really look at the rankings in there, uh, the top five ranks still go to relational DBMSs, uh, probably because these are legacy systems which are running, a lot of people use them, it's tough to move away from them. But the interesting thing to note there is uh, at number seven is MongoDB, which I guess would be uh, the leader when it comes to uh, NoSQL data stores, as of now at least. Um, and then you have an interesting entry, probably the only, among the only couple of options in the database ranking, would that be Solar at number 11. It's, it's got a gap in there, but it's, it's still, you know, coverable, I guess. This is what the search engine rankings on the same site look like, and there's solar right up there uh, with a massive gap with Elasticsearch, which was, which was at number two until recently. It's overtaken Sphinx uh, to get to number two. And yeah, that's how other uh, search solutions look like, and you can see, I guess, uh, solar is pretty much up there when it comes to ranking of search engines. So um, I'm gonna talk about other uh, NoSQL data stores uh, very uh, briefly. Like MongoDB is, uh, uses a binary uh, format, BSON. Its distribution model is, uh, is it's shattered master slave async replication. And uh, it has a portable write lock when it comes to maintaining uh, consistency. Talking about search in MongoDB, uh, they have a full text search, but it's not really up there, probably because they're not the guys who do search. Uh, they do really amazingly well when it comes to gets and puts and probably storage of data and managing it. When, but when it comes to searching across that data, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of gap between the next, you know, a good search player and what MongoDB has to, has to offer. Oh, sorry. Uh, the alternate solution there, what people generally switch to is have, a, have Solar or probably another search engine hooked up di directly into your MongoDB instance. So you uh, externally figure out how to keep it consistent with your data store, 
Uh, you, build, you, you know, you explicitly figure out how to run search on top of, of your MongoDB data store. So yes, it's not native for sure. Then there's Cassandra, which is column-based data store. Uh, there, its distributed model is basically it uses consistent hashing and dist for, for its distributed updates. Uh, for consistency, it uses timestamps for consistency. And talking about search, there are different solutions, uh, Lysandra, Solandra, but if you really look at these solutions, they're again Lucene-based, solar-based solutions, which people have kind of tried to hook into Cassandra. Uh, another thing is React. So, uh, this is something that's been built using principles from the MongoDB paper, uh, or from uh, the Amazon DynamoDB paper. Um, React search, as of now, what it looks like is it uses two things. Merge index is what they use for backend data, data store, and then they've got React Solar, which they say is uh, something that gives you Solar-like APIs and Solar-like search capabilities uh, on top of React. And then there's Yokozuna, which, as their site says, is the next generation of React search that marries React with Apache Solar. Um, it sits alongside of React, so it's again not something that's native. So, what have I said so far? Um, I've spoken about MongoDB, Cassandra, React, NoSQL search. Uh, everybody's using a different data model, and well, they work pretty well for their use cases. They're different on update handling uh, capabilities, and they seem to be working fine as well. Uh, and consistency management. Now, when you look at, uh, so they're good, uh, doing good on storage, but when you look at search, um, there's barely anything that's native right now. You've got, uh, you've got almost everybody trying to hook up Solar or Lucene, you know, uh, build something off Lucene and hook it up with their NoSQL data stores. So, how does adding search to NoSQL look? MongoDB, you know, a lot of people I know are trying to, build, you know, hook up Solar with MongoDB. Uh, Cassandra, as, you know, as, as I've already spoken about, similar solutions. The thing is, these things were not really designed for search. They were designed for storage, uh, you know, a lot of data storage, and they do pretty well on that. But if you really look at search, they're not, they may not be doing that well because they're still trying to figure out how to, how to get this to work. When you look at adding NoSQL to search, on the other hand, which is if you take up a search solution, which was built for a lot of data, you have the capacity of being able to search as well as something that handles a lot of data at the same time, right? So again, it, from what I said, I, at least to me, it feels like it's more intuitive. It's easier to think about, and so it's probably easier to, look, to implement as compared to implementing search for a NoSQL data store. Uh, again, um, I'd say there's still no key players in it as of yet, as of now at least. There's no clear cut winner as of now at least. Now talk about Apache Solar. Um, so Apache Solar 4 happened uh, a while ago, uh, and I would say it's reasonably different than the previous versions of Solar, and this is what uh, it kind of looks like. So it's doc document-oriented NoSQL search server. That's how you see a lot of people with, you know, dealing with Apache Solar talk about it as. Uh, it's certainly data format agnostic, supports a lot of data, uh, I mean, a lot of different formats. Uh, it's got schema less options. Um, I'll talk about that later. Um, it's got, it's distributed for sure, fault tolerant, it's got atomic updates. And then there are these three things, uh, you know, atomic updates, optimistic concurrency, there's near real time search, uh, which was kind of, uh, you know, things that almost led to a few key decisions in the design of Solar Cloud. Uh, before I go any further, uh, I just like to clarify when I say Solar Cloud. Solar Cloud is not hosted. Uh, it's not a hosted solution. Solar Cloud is nothing but a subset of Solar features which were meant for distributed uh, working. So things that were meant for distribute to be distributed in nature in Solar are referred to as Solar Cloud. It's nothing to do with a hosted service or integration into AWS or Microsoft Azure or any of that sort. Then it's got full text search, hit highlighting, and other specialized queries, faceted search, and other stuff that you generally get along with uh, with Solo. So these were what the Solo Cloud design goals looked like before it really was put there and released to the world. Uh, they were, uh, I mean, there was a need for all of this: an automatic, dis uh, automatic distributed indexing, high availability of writes, durable writes, uh, near real-time search, real-time get, optimistic concurrency. Um, Near real-time search and real-time get are two different things because a get is not searchable. It's a document in, that's in there. You'll get the most recent version of the document, but it may not be searchable for that content. 
Um, this is this is about Solar Cloud. Uh, if you really look at Solar Cloud, it's it's got distributed distributed indexing designed from the ground up, so it's not really borrowed stuff from here or there. Uh, when people sat down trying to look at wh what they wanted, they initially started off with a Dynamo DB paper from what I've read. And uh, for all of you who do not know, so uh, who do not know about CAP theorem, it's about distributed computing, and CAP theorem basically says between consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, when you're designing a distributed system, you can at the most get two of them perfect. You can't get all three of them. Um, and uh, in reality, uh, you have to handle partition tolerance, which is if a partition goes down, you have to be able to handle that. You, so what Solar Cloud ended up looking like is a CP system, which is it's high on uh, consistency and partition tolerance, which means it may not be available. A client might return that it's still not, you know, uh, that your updates fail for, for a time, rather than an, up, uh, an update going through, but you having to resolve consistency issues later on. Um, to handle that, uh, there's, uh, there's optimistic concurrency that's used, and I'm going to talk about that soon. Um, as I said, right, so we're valuing consistency over availability, uh, and MongoDB is probably the closest in architecture when it comes to looking at solar clouds arch architecture. Well, having said that, we still do reasonably well with availability. We use Zookeeper um, as, a, uh, as our counterpart, and uh, what happens is when you have a huge cluster and half of it is unable to talk to the other half, uh, the bigger half is the one that stays active at any given point in time, rather than the smaller half. Your updates to the smaller half generally fail, but the bigger, bigger half, uh, so things will get rerouted to the bigger half and will continue to take place. So they'll continue, it's, the cluster will be up. This might look a little complicated, but uh, this is how solar cloud, uh, you know, uh, a basic set of solar cloud would generally look like. Um, so when I say shard, uh, anybody who's uh, who's read about solar cloud so far, shard and slice are pretty much interchangeably used. Shard is basically a logical entity. So if you have, let's say, a dictionary uh, of terms, of words, let's say, and you wanted to split it into two, so I'd say shard one is something that represents terms from A, that begin from A to M, and then from N to Z are, uh, is the second shard. And then every physical node that, uh, or every physical instance that represents an index holding these, uh, this data is a replica. Now, it might sound a little confusing, but it's, everything is a replica, and one of them has the role of a leader, uh, in case of solar, uh, solar cloud. So in these cases, the ones that are in dark blue are the ones that are pretty much the leader, and the job of a leader only is as different from that of other peers which are following it. Uh, that uh, the leader ends up versioning data as well as, um, that's it, actually. It versions data and routes it to all of its, uh, it, and routes the updates to all of its followers. That's the job of a leader. That's as different a jo uh, uh, job of a leader as it gets. Every, do every shard otherwise, uh, every replica, I'm sorry, otherwise goes out and indexes its own, uh, its own documents. So Zookeeper, uh, Apache Zookeeper is another project which we use, uh, which is used to hold the cluster state, and all these shards are generally talking to Zookeeper. Uh, Zookeeper stores all of the configs, um, you know, the cluster state and everything that's to do with the distributed aspect of stuff, and these shards would go ahead and talk to Zookeeper to get the latest configs and stuff like that. Um, there's some more information that I've given there, which is um, it holds stuff like nodes in the cluster, collections, uh, schema and config for each of them, shards and replicas, and collection aliases. So distributed indexing. Um, so when you send a when you send a document uh, to Solar Cloud uh, to a Solar Cloud cluster, you don't have to be really bothered about where do you have to send it, who's the leader. Uh, you could ideally send it to any of the nodes, and it would get forwarded to the leader of that particular shard that it belongs to. It would be hashed, and you'd figure out, okay, it belongs to, let's say, shard one, and uh, replica three in this case is where you send your document. It says, okay, it belongs to shard one, and replica one happens to be the leader of that shard. The document gets routed to replica one, where it gets versioned and sent over to uh, replica two as well. Um, so that's how that's how updates 
work, and that's how, uh, and the way you get high availability in such a case is, in case replica one goes down, replica two is automatically uh, elected as the leader. Uh, when replica one comes back up again, it goes ahead and fetches the difference. Uh, it, it talks to the current leader of that shard and checks, okay, how, how far behind am I on the updates? How much have I missed? If it sees and it's, uh, it realizes that, that a lot of stuff has been missed, it probably does a full uh, index sync. In the other case, when it realizes it's just a few documents that have been missed, there's no need to pull up the entire index. You generally get those updates sent from, uh, the, cur from the current leader to the one who's uh, recovering. So this is uh, optimistic concurrency, and this is how consistency is pretty much uh, managed in Solar Cloud. Um, so let's say you, you as a client want to update a document in Solar. Uh, the first thing you do is you get a document. Uh, when you get a document, you also get a version number from the do in the document. You modify the document, retaining the version number. So you know what's the current version number, and you keep it as a part of the document. You send this uh, new document back to the back to Solar, and when Solar looks it up and says, "Okay, uh, uh, I have this is actually the the latest version of the document that I have," and so I'll update it. If that's not the case, which is in the meanwhile between step one and three, somebody else went in, fetched the version number, updated the document, and now the version number on, on Solar is different. Uh, it's, you'll have to retry the, uh, the entire thing because it would return a failure. It would actually return a 409 uh, HTTP code, which is basically a conflict. So this is how consistency is managed in, in Solar Cloud. Uh, so these are different uh, distributed query requests, uh, how you could either send it to the entire cluster and say, uh, this is my query, uh, distribute it, uh, and Solar Cloud does it for you, picks up load balances and picks up the right shards, queries them, aggregates the results and gets you back. Or you can explicitly specify the addresses to load, ba to load balance on. You can j probably just go and say, uh, you know, uh, so shards is equal to localhost, whatever, uh, you know, slash solar and the other port. So everything separated by a pipe, uh, it's going to load balance between all of those. And everything separated by commas are stuff that it will send queries to. So you can specify logical shards, multiple collections, and uh, Cloud Solar Server is an API thing which you can probably use because it's smart enough to figure out, uh, it's zookeeper aware, which means it goes out and figure, figures out which shard to send a particular update on. Uh, so it's smart enough in that sense, and so it's, it's a better option for you to use. So, uh, document routing, considering uh, Solar Cloud shards stuff uh, across. So, it's basically what it's doing is it's 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 hashing your key and creating hash ranges across shards. Uh, what it looks like is it's it's a ring of hash keys, right? It's a circular ring of hash keys. And in this case, let's say you've got four shards, and that is how uh, each of them has one fourth of the hash range. Um, Way, uh, okay, so one thing that you can use is a composite ID router. What you do with a composite ID router is uh, you can decide to have a particular shard uh, co-host all of the stuff from a particular, let's say, if you're, if you're trying to, um, let's say, do books, or you're trying to index books, uh, or an e-commerce site, so you've got books in different categories, you can have the first part as the category uh, with a with a with an exclamation mark followed by the document ID. This, though the entire thing is a document ID, only the first part, which in this case is big co, is used to hash which ring. Uh, I mean, which ring would this document belong belong to? So that everything that has big co exclamation appended to it will go ahead to the same shard. So when you have a query that comes in, you can say, okay, I just query the shard that con contains this ID. Uh, I'm not going to go into more detail about how routing works. Uh, there's some nice write-ups on a few blogs. Uh, I could share that with you after the talk if you want to go through that. So uh, durable rights. Uh, so um, Apache Solar is basically built on top of Lucene. And uh, Lucene flushes uh, writes to a disk only when a commit is called, uh, which means uncommitted commits are going to be lost if you happen to kill JVM uh, randomly. Um, 
Solar Power, whereas on the other hand, maintains its own transaction log. What a transaction log does is when an update comes in, the update is written to the transaction log uh, and only is a positive response passed back, which means you persisted it to the disk. The transaction log resides on the disk. Uh, um, the index is, however, not updated. The transaction log is basically used for two things, uh, primarily for your writes to be durable as well as for real-time gets. So real-time gets actually uh, are done through the transaction log. In case something goes down, what it does is when it comes back up, it goes through the transaction log again and plays it back, which means you wouldn't have lost anything if you accidentally killed up a JVM. So uh, that's one way of having durable writes. The other thing is, in a cluster, you could have your writes or updates forwarded to different uh, different shards, which are basically rep or different replicas of the same leader, which means that if this leader goes down, you would have another leader that would come back up. Uh, you would never lose any document, probably. So uh, these are basically uh, the collections API. That's that's basically a set of API calls, which Solar Cloud comes with. Uh, these are the uh, really straightforward mechanisms to do a, a collection-wide, uh, you know, operation. A create, delete, alias, split shard, delete shard, and reload. Pretty much the collection APIs that we have right now. I don't think we have anything more than that right now. Um, and that's how easy it is to just have a collection create. I mean, create a collection, which is you just call this. Um, with an action as create, name of the collection, number of shards that you want, and a replication factor. I'm not sure if the replication factor is persisted as of now, but it's used in a way to figure out what router would be picked up for you. So, um, Solo Poda 3, uh, there's an interesting thing that went in. Uh, when you start up Solar Cloud, you have to pre specify what's the size of, what's the number of shards that you want to split your hash range in. Um, if you if you want to you know change this number later on until recently what you had to do was you had to go ahead and uh, restart recreate the entire collection re-index all of the data with the new replication uh, new dumb shards right uh, which means setting it up all over again but there was no other way to do it at re do it real time with just moving around stuff um, so there's something that came up in 4.3 4 uh, known, uh, known as shard splitting which is a collections API. Uh, this is how the call looks like, um, which says, uh, you know, it, the action is split shard, collection is so and so, and uh, that's the shard name. What it does is it takes, it lets you specify a shard name. You, you specify a shard name, and uh, it goes ahead and seamlessly splits the shard into two. As of now, that's hard coded. You can only split it into two. So if you want to split it further down, you can re, uh, you can call that over and over again on an already split shard. Um, the good thing about this is you don't have to re-index anything. You can go ahead and split something. You can begin with an estimate that is small enough, and then grow, you know, grow, uh, grow out of it uh, by splitting your existing shards, which are bloating up probably because of data or you're receiving too many requests. What it does is basically it creates subshards in construction state. Um, a, a shard in a construction state is something that does not receive any requests uh, from the outside world. But uh, when you create a subshard in construction state, the, le uh, the parent of the shard that it's getting constructed from starts forwarding all the updates that it's getting onto it. So in this case, shard 2.0 or 2 underscore 0 and 2 underscore 1 are the subshards that will get created. Initially, these are in construction state, and all requests coming to shard 2, which is all updates, will be forwarded to both of these subshards. Sub this guy will start maintaining a transaction log and buffering all of that. After that buffering starts, shard two, the the core on shard two will, uh, the index on that will be split and installed in both of these as per the hash range. And once that happens, you replay all of the transaction log and get that in sync with where shard two is right now. Once that happens, you create replicas of shard two underscore zero and shard two underscore one to to match the replication factor of the parent, so so that you're not overwhelmed when when you get to active state. And then you sh and then it automatically shuts down shard two. Uh, doesn't really shut down. It marks it as inactive, so you don't ever get any updates, no requests, no queries, no updates. Uh, and requests start coming into shard two underscore zero two underscore one. Um, as of now, um, among the released versions, you you don't have a way uh, 
a collections API to clean that up, uh, you have to manually go and clean up uh, the, the parent shard for now at least. So uh, yeah, that's how a split shard thing looks like and uh, Solo 4.4 is in the works and should be released pretty soon. Um, I guess the release candidate of the, I mean of 4.4 should be out pretty soon. Uh, schema less is what, uh, what's the key factor in there other than, oh just sorry, uh, sorry that I forgot but 4.3.1 is something, uh, if you want to use split shard do not uh, go with 4.3, if you want to try it out please use 4.3.1, uh, 4.3 is buggy uh, and you might, you're bound to run into issues. 4.4 uh, is a schema less, uh, when you say schema less, uh, there's no way you can say no schema, uh, Lucene when it wants to index a document needs a, needs a schema, you need to specify and you have to be consistent with how a particular field looks like. Uh, so uh, what, the best bet so far was using dynamic fields which is you uh, you stick with convention over configuration. When I say that, I mean uh, you have a convention in how you name your fields, and you say any field that looks like so and so will actually belong to a particular field type. So you could say anything that is underscore i will be an integer field. And tomorrow you have a new field in your data that starts coming up, and you realize it's an integer. You can have field name underscore i instead of that field name itself and Solo would, would recognize it as an integer field. So you need to specify field names and conventions in your uh, in a schema and then you can just go ahead and add fields. That was dynamic fields. But now what's coming up is one thing is guest schema. Uh, and also you'll be able to, uh, with 4.4 you'll be able to add fields on the fly, uh, concrete fields rather than having to specify dynamic fields. So you don't have to stick to a convention even, you can add a field on the fly. Uh, Guest schema is another thing that's coming up, which is uh, you specify a field, it looks at JSON input, and kind of tries to guess what kind of field does it look like. Uh, again, with the guesswork in place, it certainly will not optimize, right? Uh, it looks at a number and it has to decide whether it's a, it's an integer, it's a double, I mean, w w what is it? Uh, in which case, you might run into optimization issues if you, if you're really, uh, you know, finicky about optimizing your stuff. On the other hand, uh, you'll never end up catching field naming errors, which is uh, you've enabled guest schema, which means uh, uh, your, do your document contains a typo in your field name, and uh, you never get, a, get an error in response because this guy goes ahead and guesses a, a field type and goes, a goes ahead and adds that field to it, which means uh, it's added probably 10 fields only because you had typos in your raw, raw data, whereas you never intended for that to happen. So I'm not a big fan of type guessing, um, but yeah, that's that's what uh, coming up. And also, if uh, if guessing doesn't really work out, and you realize it later, that probably means you have to re-index that stuff. Um, so we guys, all I'm done with my presentation as far as um, telling you guys or talking about solo is concerned. But we guys here run. Uh, a meetup, an Apache Lucene Solo meetup in Bangalore, and we already are almost 150 people strong. We already had, we've had one uh, meetup so far, and we had a good show of around 60 people in the first meetup. Um, feel free to join the group if you're interested in anything search or solo in particular. Uh, that's the link. Uh, we, we also have uh, a desk outside, so feel free to come talk to us. Yeah, and yeah, we are planning to have a meetup soon. I'm not sure about the date, but it might just be around 26th of the month. That's where you can uh, follow me more. Yeah, none. Uh, any questions? Right. So do you I can't hear you. Ah, uh, nothing concrete, but I guess uh, did AOL move to Solar Cloud? Uh, AOL did move to Solar Cloud, and as far as I remember, they did publish some some numbers on the user list. I don't have any numbers right now.
Be done. Hi. So you have made a pretty good point about using Solar as a NoSQL data store. Yep. But how well does it scale in case the index become very large, say like 80 GB, 100 GB? I and guess you should be fine with an 80 gig kind of a setup. Uh, I haven't personally tried it out to that extent. Uh, I mean, so I have seen scale. I have seen that it works pretty well as soon as as far as the index size is small. But as the index grows and my all fields are indexed. Because if I want it as a data store, then I, I would want all my fields to be searchable. So I have to index them. And in that case, it is starts like crawling. So uh, do you have any design suggestions on like how to fix this if the index size becomes very large? I know, I mean, one thing could be you could op optimize your schema and probably look at how you're sharding your stuff. Uh, these guys are also doing some, uh, Noble and Charlene here, are also doing some custom sharding stuff, uh, which might come in handy for you if you want to kind of figure out where do your documents go and how to shard them? That might come in as a as a handy optimization for you. No, we can always put more resources. That's uh, okay. But the thing is, do you have do you, do you have, have you tested it out and you're saying it doesn't work? Yeah, I mean, as compared to others, see, suppose if I'm using other column oriented database, and in the Without same the search. No, I'm I'm comparing the Solar as NoSQL with other NoSQL okay. data stores. So if I'm using same type of resources with other databases, yep. then it scales pretty well for 80, 100 GB of data. Yep. Yeah. But if I'm using Solar as a NoSQL data store, right. then I don't think it uh, works that much better. Yeah, so, so the thing is, um, if, if you're really looking at having your data searchable, uh, Solar Cloud is a good, yeah, Noble. <laughs> So, are you able to query the uh, no, uh, data in your other store by any other field or is it only by ID or one, one other field in other data store? But you're, so, you're searching on all of the fields. Yeah. yeah. Which means, uh, so you're actually using so, uh, Solar as a, uh, you know, a NoSQL which, power, which also supports search. So yeah. You want the search part. You're not using it as a plain NoSQL. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and you're... I, I really doubt that. I'm not really sure if you're really using search, of, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's what I want to understand. I mean, is it designed to handle this like 100 GB index? Um, I can give you anything generic. Um, rather than just uh, trying out different, you know, uh, short sizes. Okay. okay maybe. And other thing is like uh, Solar comes with embedded Zookeeper. It also comes with embedded zookeeper, though in production we'd highly recommend, we'd actually say no oh. to it. Uh, you should not to use embedded. Not use it because uh, when you say you're embedding a zookeeper in solar, uh, one big thing is uh, you do you lose the liberty of the node going down um, and a new, you know, a leader getting elected or a replica going down or whatever, right? Uh, your zookeeper goes down is a problem. Uh, a solar instance going down is not a problem. So you don't want to mess up with zookeeper. Okay, thanks. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so I am using Elasticsearch, and one of the features that I like is uh, the reverse feature. So you can, uh, for example, set up a river and uh, tail CouchDB or uh, MongoDB transaction logs. Is there something like that available? Uh, let's say I want to uh, tail a DB transaction log or a file system and automatically index it instead of running bad jobs? I don't know about, uh, about piping, but you probably could use DIH uh, to read, the, read that data. But otherwise, I don't, I don't think we have a streaming support as of now out of the box. Okay. I mean, I don't think we have any streaming support uh, is, if that, that is exactly what you're asking for. Yeah, something like so that. I don't think so we any have streaming support directly out of the box right now. Okay. So any third pl party plugin available from the uh, community? I didn't get you. A any third party plugin which does the same thing for solar, avail which is available from the community? I guess DIS should do that for you. Uh, Shalin could be in a better position to answer that. Though. So uh, what Elasticsearch offers is basically uh, 
the community has built certain plugins for indexing certain kind of data sources specifically. Uh, what Solar has is data input handler, which can index uh, your databases or XML files, or it can crawl your file system. And there are pl plenty of commercial partners which provide support for other things. But then the biggest part about Solar is because a lot of people have used it for a lot of very different use cases. There are a lot of plugin points available, so you can actually use them to build whatever you want. So you could either find something or write something and plug it in. But there's no direct streaming support other than DIH, which you could probably use. Yes, good to go. Okay, you guys can find me outside anyways and the other guys. Thank you.